Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of questions about other software defined solutions. And this channel is not specifically about Cisco. However, I do want to make certain that there is an interest in understanding a solution or a set of solutions offered by another vendor before I begin creating content related to it. Now, as a result of this, it's important to point out that we have a couple of other solutions. Probably the most popular solution out there right now is going to be VMware's NSX solution or VMware's Velo Cloud solution. Now, what I want to do is I want to give you guys the opportunity to express to me whether or not you're interested in videos on those particular subjects and topics. I mean, obviously, Cisco's not the only solution out there. So, what I want you guys to do is, I want you to, in the comments below, let me know if you want to see videos on NSXV, NSXT, or Velo Cloud. As a result of that, what I'm going to do is, I've already got a, mi a mini class or a micro class that I've built on NSXV. And if you guys want to actually see that, let me know in the comments below. NSXV is falling out of vogue, it's dropping off the radar, but it's still out there. And if you're going to be working with an organization that's going to be migrating from NSXV to NSXT, it's going to be really important that you understand how NSXV works, at least on a fundamental level. So what I'm going to do is I have a video that is going to be an excerpt from my mini class on NSXV, and I hope you guys enjoy it, and it's going to start right now. All right, I want to cover one more thing before we dive in and start talking about the operation of NSX. And I want to break these servers that I have, these ESXi hosts up, into their appropriate clusters. Now, I'm going to do that on the whiteboard because we're going to be spending the first part of the class focused on these three servers here. This is part of my cluster that I have configured that is acting as my management and control cluster. Now, as part of the management and control configuration, this is where we're going to be spending the lion's share of our time when it comes to setting up NSX. We're going to need to start installing, configuring, and talking about some of the components that actually allow VMware to work and emulate the idea of networking and security configurations. Let's not even say emulate. Let's say it's a, it's going to virtualize those functions. It's going to virtualize security configurations in the form of the distributed firewalls. It's going to configure and support the idea of layer three forwarding, something that we haven't had before. So ideally, what we're going to do is we're going to be spending the next little bit of our time focused on this concept and this area of my configuration that is going to be in the management and control cluster that I have configured. Now, before we do that, I do want to have a conversation about the way things operate when it comes to working with devices like routers and switches. I mean, I'm a network guy. I'm a dyed-in-the-wool infrastructure person. I have two CCIEs, one in routing and switching, one in data center, and that means that I look at everything from the perspective of being a network subject matter expert. Now, when we look at a router. So if I were to draw a circle for this router, it's important to understand that we have something called the Network Foundation Protection Guidelines. Now the Network Foundation Protection Guidelines actually are a security component. It governs the areas of operation that we would traditionally protect when we do things in networking. So as an example, Network Foundation Protection defines three what we call planes of exposure. We have what is referred to as the management plane. We have what is called the control plane. We have what is referred to as the data plane or the forwarding plane. And devices like routers, let's just go in here and say this is R1, are actually going to be divided from a logical perspective in such a way that what we do is we actually try to place certain functions and certain capabilities in certain sections that we are going to identify as these planes. So if I came in and I subdivided this router into three planes 
of operation, where this first plane is going to be my management plane, the second plane would be my control plane, and the third plane obviously would be my data or my forwarding plane. And it's important to understand that routers and switches maintain logical constructs that are going to be relative to each of these planes. As an example, in the management plane, I may run something like SSH or Telnet that's going to allow me to be able to connect as a user or programmatically to this specific device using a management IP address. And if that IP address is not protected, i.e. based on the governances of Network Foundation Protection, what ends up happening is I'm exposing myself to risk. And it's also important to understand that management means I can actually access the device and I can configure it. So when we look at what's going on next, let's say we have Layer 2 product protocols and we have Layer 3 protocols. Well, a perfect example of a Layer 3 protocol and a Layer 2 protocol would be something like, say, OSPF for Layer 3. And say, uh, it might be something like the MAC address table. So I have my content addressable memory table that keeps a record of all of the MAC addresses associated to machines that are part of my infrastructure. Maybe not in a router, but definitely in a switch. And I also have something like my routing information base. Now, the routing information base resides in the control plane. It's a software construct. In Cisco's devices, they employ something called ASIC, Application Specific Integrated Circuit, which allows me to be able to forward data, packets, and frames at line rate. And that requires me to actually have intelligence running inside of the data plane, and we call that, as an example, would be the FIB. Another example may be, let's say we're running MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. I may have something in here called the LIB, the label information base. And down here in the forwarding plane, I can have or would have the LFIB, the label forwarding information base. And each of these constructs provide specific functions. Now, it should not come as any surprise that if we are going to be using VMware for the purposes of virtualizing network functions or network function virtualization, what we've been hearing called SD-WAN, not SD-WAN, so we'll say SD-IN, software-defined networking, the, the object is, is that we have to take all of the things that we're going to be working with here and what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to correlate it to the way routing is going to take place in the physical world. Because ultimately what I'm going to do is I'm going to be deploying the idea of logical distributed routers in each of these hosts. And I'm going to use those routers to allow these hosts to communicate with each other. So it's almost like having a little virtual routing and forwarding instance a virtual router, if you would, inside of each of these ESXi hosts. And ultimately, we're going to be looking at some advanced concepts. So, for as an example, we'll be looking at VXLANs, which is going to allow me to have ESXi host 1 communicate to ESXi host 3, even if they're isolated geographically. ESXi 1 could be situated here in Virginia where I am, and ESXi 3 could be in California. These are the concepts that we're going to be looking at doing. And we're going to actually implement and discuss these in terms of the solutions that VMware offers that comes to us in the form of NSX, of which there's two flavors. There is NSXV, which is designed specifically for VMware. It allows me to put virtual switching constructs inside of VMware hosts. However, there is also something called NSXT. And NS, uh, NSXT is basically trans hypervisor. So if I wanted to get this exact same functionality and I want to use something other than ESXi hosts or I want to use ESXi hosts in concert with something else, I use NSXT. NSXT supports virtualization in the cloud. It supports virtualization in the enterprise or what we call on-prem using solutions like OpenStack. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as well as Hyper-V, 
all virtualization constructs or services that offer, offer virtualization constructs. So don't be surprised when I start trying to describe this idea of virtual security and networking in the context of the way that we've been doing things for decades in hardware. As if, if any of you guys are network professionals, it'll make it so much easier for you to understand the way NSX works because honestly, it's not that different than anything else. It's not that different from ACI. It's not that different from the way things work in the actual physical world when it comes to hardware switches and routers. So I wanted to take an opportunity to kind of interject this into our conversation just so that you guys will have a frame of reference for when I start looking at how we would assign NSX components, things like the NSX manager, the NSX controllers. Obviously, I'm going to begin assigning those into this NFP model. However, when it comes to VMware, I will be adding some additional things. So inside of NSX, these control planes have to function as a distributed entity. Just like in this physical router, everything functions in the back plane. But if I had like an ACI, obviously I want to have leaves connected to leaves, and they're going to have be connected via an ACI fabric. Inside of vCenter and inside of VMware with NSX, they're going to be connected with a vCenter managed fabric. They're going to operate in very similar ways. They're going to have the same outcome, but they're going to do the implementation, the configuration, the control, and the actual operation operations differently, even though they may still be somewhat similar. Another thing that you're going to need to note right out of the gate is, is that when it comes to correlating the function of NSX in VMware to NFP, I need to add a third component or a fourth component. I've got the management plane, the control plane, and the data plane. I'm also going to add something called the communication agents. And we'll talk about those. It's also important to understand that there is a third layer. There is a third plane, and that plane is actually going to be referred to as the consumption plane. So how are the services going to be consumed by users or consumed in the form of deployable services by administrators like us? So as an example, I could use something like vRealize. I could use the API to consume or to deploy these services. So again, these are all things that we need to keep, our, keep in the forefront of our mind so that we don't lose track of the fact that even though this is inside of VMware, something that forever has been virtualizing compute and network, I'm sorry, compute and storage resources, we're now adding a virtual networking and security construct and we need to understand how it is similar to and how it is different from the way we've been doing it in normal network infrastructure and enterprise network infrastructure for years. So again, like I said, I wanted to tack that on here before we dive in and start, we start actually building these resources that I'm outlining here in this particular lightboard. I'll see you guys in the next video.